I'm, having read Patient Zero, I'm sure you've given thought to this, as I'm sure many of us have. In the likely event of a zombie outbreak, what would be your preferred primary, secondary, and melee weapon? <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really good with a katana. Uh, I've, been, I've been practicing kenjutsu since 1968. Respect. Um, I will get me through a mess of zombies. You don't need to reload, um, and they're real quiet. Uh, I will real quickly, anyone who is following me or, or, or with me, I will teach them the very basics of how to block and smash. Block the arm, hit the head or neck. You know, we can do that with a club, stick, anything. What was that weapon? Katana, Katana Japanese sword. Oh, okay. um, and uh, I will survive the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> now, <laughs> fast zombies of the um, the new Dawn of the Dead version or the, or the 28 days later version, it's an unwinnable scenario for anyone. You can survive the moment, you will not survive the year. Um, and why would you want to? Um, but the Romero zombies, yeah, I, I definitely will survive that. In fact, I had a conversation with Tony Todd about that. Uh, he was in the remake of Night of the Living Dead. And I asked him, I said, you know, I know Ben dies in that, but would Tony Todd get out? I said, oh, yeah, Tony Todd get out. You know? um, and uh, my secondary weapon would be a, um, uh, probably either a Bowie knife or a, a, a Marine K-bar. Great for close quarters work. The other thing would be carpet. I would wrap myself in carpet. <laughs> in fact, in my, my young adult novel, um, Rotten Ruins coming out, there's a lot of things that are very practical. You ever try to bite through a piece of carpet? You're not going to do it. They're in a house. they got carpets. Wrap, cut it up. Wrap it around your body. You know, wrap it around your head. I don't care if they, they can bite you. They're not going to bite through the carpet. You can stroll through the zombies. You know, you bash and stroll if you want to. Yes, you'll sweat a lot. So what? Um, <laughs> It's just so practical. So in, in that story, which takes place 14 years after the apocalypse, one of the professions is selling carpet coats. Um, another, actually, the other thing that I'm having fun with is, is called something called erosion art. Um, the last communities are small gated communities, small fencing communities in California in, in this story. And um, the zombies you know, are still you know, kind of loitering around the towns where they were created because why would a zombie go anywhere? Once it's a zombie, there's no prey to chase, it'll stay. So they hire bounty hunters to go and find family members who are zombies and kill them. It's called quieting them. And what they do is they give a photo to an artist who then does a portrait of that person <laughs> as a zombie. It's called an erosion portrait. Well, somebody here doing that. Yeah, I know. There's several people doing In fact, he's one of the guys that I, I've been talking to. Uh, there's another one, Rob Sacchetto, who does zombie portraits. Mm, right. um, and as Mac Caldwell and a few others. Kids also collect zombie cards in the, in the book. So... Um, you know, depending on how, how successful this is, we're actually you know, hoping that uh, either Simon & Schuster or if it's picked up by a movie company, that they'll authorize a set of zombie cards and guys like, uh, I think it's Flegel, I think his name is the one that was here, um, and a few of the others will be able to do the zombie cards. It'll be fun. Well, I know we're, we're about to close out here, so um, uh, before we ask for last words from yourself, I know you talked about feeding the need of fans. So if uh, while people are waiting for Dragon Factory to come out, or your next book. Um, what are some other zombie books that uh, that you like ah. that you would feel like you could recommend? Jesus, there's so many. Uh, the thing is, I like zombie books are, are to me like zombie movies. I like even the bad ones mm. um, because if there's zombies in it, you you're, you pretty much already have two thirds of my interest anyway. <laughs> so I give a lot more credit to a zombie novel than I would to uh, to say a bad vampire novel. Mm. Um, but there are luckily a lot of good ones out there, and they're not always the ones. You know, I mean, everybody knows about about uh, Brian Keane's books and David Wellington's and and Max Brooks. I don't need to pitch you on those. Joe McKinney's book, Dead City. I love that book. Um, it is basically one long action scene. He's getting the hell out of Boston, like a cop, and he's just killing people. And he and by the way, he is a uh, a cop in Austin, so it's very accurate stuff. Um, I like uh, uh, Travis Atkins stuff, J.L. Bourne stuff. Um, I haven't, I've only read one David Moody book. Um, actually, he's sending me some others. Um, but my favorite thing uh, to, to give you your zombie fix is Robert Kirkman's Walking Dead comic. Mm. It is Night of the Living Dead in flavor, in tone, in respect, in everything. In comic book form, you get 22 pages of it a month, and it's brilliant. I absolutely love that book. Uh, it is the, I'd say that is the best zombie writing I've ever seen.
Mm. And I actually think he's done better stuff, and don't throw anything at me, than Romero. Now, granted, Romero created it, did some mm. great stuff, but Kirkman, you know, in the 60-some issues he's been doing that, has just taken it the next step and the next step and the next step. And it's brilliant, insightful, complex, character-driven character, character -driven zombie stuff. I really highly recommend it. Brutal. And, uh, totally uncompromised. He doesn't have a shred of sentimentality in his body. That's <laughs> great. Makes us like the characters. Mm -hmm. Then he'll kill them, torture them, mainly. <laughs> um, and also, just a, a quick plug. Um, this is not zombie related, but uh, I have another. Next year, I have three novels coming out. I have uh, Dragon Factory, I have Rotten Ruin. I also have The Wolfman coming out in February, which is the novelization of the Benicio del Toro, Anthony Hopkins, Hugo Weaving, oh, Emily Blunt remake. And it's coming out in February, right in time for Valentine's Day, because nothing says romance <laughs> like visceral werewolf slaughter. Um, <laughs> They did a great job reimagining the film. They set it in, in the 1800s, and it's beautiful and brilliant and uh, much more complex. And Wolfman was my favorite Universal film, and, and uh, they did a hell of a job with the new one. Rick Baker uh, did the make makeup effects, and, uh, and the book comes out uh, a week before the film, which is a little close, but uh, <laughs> it'll be out from tour books in, fe in February. So. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. And don't forget, Larry Smith has the books, and I'll see you guys around. Thanks, thanks for coming out. Great. Yes, we got some prizes. You man there who t talked about the, uh, yes, you and the bun. I think you need the big the big prize because you kept us going for the longest. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, great, great Oh, no, no, no. I love me some science Too much. Yes. Uh, that is for you. There's also flyers up here with information about uh, Dragon Factory and, um, and my panelists. Oh, there you go. I love Al.